The Big Bang Theory, which many of us have probably heard of before, is currently the most accepted theory in the scientific community regarding the history of our universe. And it describes how the universe hasn't been around forever, but is actually about 13.7 billion years old. And the universe hasn't always looked the way that it appears to us today. Rather, the universe began in an incredibly hot and incredibly dense state, and the universe then expanded. And as it expanded, the universe gradually cooled, which allowed stars to form and galaxies and all the structure that we see around us today. And this video series is going to go into a fair amount of detail as to how this actually happened and a fair amount of detail on what observational evidence do we have to support this theory. But to begin, I want to just give a brief overview of the timeline of the Big Bang Theory and a brief overview of the evidence that we actually have to, to support this. So to begin, instead of talking about when uh, the universe, the exact moment that the universe began, instead of talking about that first, I want to talk about when the universe was one billionth of a second old, so one nanosecond old. And as I said, the universe started in this incredibly hot and incredibly dense state. And by incredibly hot, I mean that the temperature was approximately 300 trillion degrees Kelvin. That's a three followed by 14 zeros. Uh, and that temperature by everyday standards is just incomprehensible. But we can actually uh, we can actually reach these temperatures in things like the Large Hadron Collider. So we can actually test out what physics is like at these temperatures. And what this universe must have been made of at this point is high energy radiation, so photons, and the subatomic particles that are known as quarks. And these quarks are the building blocks of protons and neutrons, which more people may have heard of. But if at this point, if these quarks try to join together to form protons and neutrons, then at these energies, other quarks would just be flying around so fast that they'd run into these these new uh, protons and neutrons and just bash them apart. So at this point, only quarks were in this in this universe. But as time went on, so so the age of the universe went up to about one millisecond, the universe has gotten a little bit bigger, and the temperature has gone down to about 300 billion degrees. So still extremely high, like unimaginably high by everyday standards. But at this point, these quarks could actually start to form uh, protons and neutrons. So protons or, or hydrogen nuclei and neutrons. But at this stage, these, the energy is still too high for these to start to uh, uh, join together. We can't get uh, heavier elements out of this. So as the universe continues to expand, so now the time is about uh, 3 to 20 minutes after the Big Bang, the universe has gotten a little bit bigger. And at this point, the temperature is around 300 million degrees. 300 million. So this is about the temperature that you get in the cores of large stars. And at this temperature, we can actually have protons and neutrons start to fuse together. So the we get atomic nuclei. Atomic nuclei. So the hydrogen in here can join with a neutron to form heavy hydrogen or deuterium. And we can get hydrogens coming together to form helium. And also at this point, a tiny bit of lithium was made. But really, it was mostly just hydrogen, a little bit of deuterium, and, and some helium that was left at this stage. Now, at this point, there are also electrons flying around, but these electrons still had way, way too much energy to actually form atoms. So it was all these nuclei flying around and all these freely flying electrons going around. In order to actually form atoms, we have to wait a little bit longer until the next period which occurred about 380,000 years later. 380,000 years later. So the universe has gotten quite a bit bigger. 
I'm not going to fill in the whole thing, but you get the idea. And now actual atoms can form. So we have hydrogen ha atoms, we have helium atoms, and we have a tiny, tiny bit of lithium. And at this point, when the all of the electrons are being picked up by these by these atomic nuclei to form atoms, something very important happens. The the universe at this point will actually become clear or transparent to light. So earlier on, this uh, this these masses of protons or masses of atomic nuclei, the energies were so high that light couldn't pass through it. It was opaque. The, it would be like light trying to pass through a wall. It would just, you know, bounce off and, and have other interactions. But at this point, 380,000 years after the Big Bang, this universe actually became clear. So, so light could freely pass through it. And the temperature at this point, the temperature at this point was around 3,000 degrees Kelvin. 3,000 degrees Kelvin. So after this, there's, the temperature isn't high enough for these, these hydrogen, helium, and, and tiny bit of lithium to keep fusing. So not much happened. And this mass was almost completely uniform. There were just tiny little density fluctuations in it. Uh, but, you know, extremely, extremely tiny density fluctuations. But eventually, over the next 100 million to, to 1 billion years after the Big Bang, any of these tiny little density fluctuations in this mass of hydrogen and helium, those would start to collapse under gravity. And at this point, we get the first stars forming. So initially, it was just this massive uh, cloud of atoms that at this point wasn't actually bright, but under gravity, these start to collapse to form stars and, and start to form the first galaxies. So I can try and draw a couple little galaxies in here. And what's important about this point in time is that these stars could now fuse some of the hydrogen and helium to form heavier elements. So this is actually one of the, to me, one of the most amazing kind of concepts of, of the Big Bang is that initially only hydrogen and helium were around and all of the other heavier elements like oxygen and carbon and all of the elements, heavier elements that make up you and I and everything around us were actually formed in stars in this initial 100 million to 1 billion years after the Big Bang. And these stars eventually uh, eventually ran out of fuel. They, they fused these heavier elements and eventually exploded and distributed these heavier elements all, over, all throughout the galaxy. And this allowed uh, older stars, or I guess I should say newer stars, to... Uh, be able to form second, second and third and, and later generation stars, including our sun. So, so these these galaxies have continued to evolve, and, and all of these heavier elements are now distributed throughout the universe. This is maybe around uh, this is maybe around uh, ten billion years after the Big Bang. So this is when our sun forms, and finally we get. Uh, about 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang, we get the universe that we see around us today, which is all of these galaxies and, and stars and, and nebula, nebula and all of these other structures that have all of these elements that we see today in us. But these, this galaxy, sorry, this universe is still expanding. So, so these galaxies are generally going to be flying away from each other. So this is the basic overview of, of the Big Bang. It started at in a very small, dense state and eventually formed all of the elements that we have around us uh, and expanded, eventually becoming clear and forming stars and galaxies and our sun and eventually giving us the galaxy or the universe, sorry, that we see around us. And in the next video, I'll give a brief overview of the evidence that we have to support that this is actually how the universe evolved.